Alaska cruises are extremely popular. They are bucket list for many first-time or even experienced cruisers. Seattle and Vancouver, British Columbia are the two most popular ports to sail from. What are the differences and which is right for you? We'll explore that today on Seymour Seas. I've been working a lot with clients lately, booking and planning this year's as well as next year's Alaska cruises. We have looked at lots of different itineraries and options, but the biggest question seems to be, which port should we leave from? There are a lot of similarities, but there's also many differences. In today's video, I will break down all of our lessons learned. Hi everyone and welcome. If you are new here, I am Doug and this is Seymour Seas, your cruise tips and planning channel where I hope to help you and your family pick, plan, and enjoy your next cruise vacation. When you're ready to book your next cruise, make sure that you email me here on the email address shown on the screen or find my contact information in the video description. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more cruise content just like this. I thank you for supporting the channel and with that, Let's get started. Let's get started today by talking about some of the typical itineraries that you're going to find out of Seattle and Vancouver. We're going to focus mostly on the mass market cruise lines as well as the premium segment. Now there are lots of luxury options available as well as expedition cruises out of both locations. However, we're going to focus in on those two major groups. Out of Seattle, you're going to have mostly round-trip seven-night cruises. They're going to visit most of the standard ports of call. That would be Ketchikan, Juneau, and Skagway. Now, you might have some substitutes in there of maybe Icy Strait Point as well as Sitka. Now, you're normally going to visit one glacier area. That's going to be either Glacier Bay National Park, Dawes Glacier, and sometimes the Northern Hubbard Glacier. On a Seattle round trip, one of the things that you're going to have to do is stop in Victoria, British Columbia, which is the mandatory Canadian stop caused by the Passenger Vessel Services Act of 1886. This means that you have to stop in a foreign country if you're doing a round trip out of any U.S. port. Out of Vancouver, you're going to have also seven night round trips visiting some of the same standard ports being Ketchikan, Juneau, and Skagway. You might replace Skagway with Icy Strait Point or even Haines or Sitka. There's normally one more port day from a round trip seven night from Vancouver. Also from Vancouver, you're going to have one-way options, which are northbound and southbound seven night cruises. These go from Vancouver to either Whittier or Seward, which actually transport you then to Anchorage. There are also cruise tours out of Vancouver, which is normally that northbound one-way cruise with some land tours thrown in after your cruise, making your adventure anywhere from 10 to 14 days. Let's shift gears just a bit, and for these Alaska cruises, let's talk about the pros and the cons of each of these embarkation ports. Let's start with Seattle. So some of the pros for Seattle is number one, accessibility. Now this is a major US airport, Alaska Airlines is based there, and it's served by almost all of the major airlines. This is probably going to be easier for most US travelers based on the fact that you're not gonna to have to deal with any of the immigration or customs procedures. Next is going to be cost, because of the cruise lines deploying most of their larger major ships out of Seattle, the price of the cruise possibly is going to be slightly lower than that of Vancouver. Also, the travel cost will probably be a little bit lower due to the fact that this is a domestic flight for most US travelers and it is not an international flight to Vancouver. 
Another benefit and pro for Seattle is that it is an absolutely awesome city to visit for tourism. There are lots of different attractions, such as obviously the Space Needle, you have Pike's Market, you have a very vibrant waterfront, and there are lots of different museums and activities around the downtown area. I have also found that there are a number of major hotels and various levels of accommodations within the port area and the downtown, making it absolutely a great choice for any budget. And the last pro for sailing out of Seattle to Alaska is that most of the cruise lines are going to deploy their newest and largest ships for these sailings. This could be a con for some, but it does allow for multi-generational families to have everything all in one ship. Let's move now to some of the cons for sailing out of Seattle to Alaska. The first one I'm going to call as scenery. I don't feel that it's as scenic as a departure as what you'll find from Vancouver. Now the Puget Sound is beautiful. It has lots of scenery around, but it just does not compare. Also, when you're leaving the Seattle area and the port, you will go to the open ocean, so you're not getting to the inside passage as quickly as you would from uh, sailing out of Vancouver. The next con for sailing out of Seattle is that this is going to be a longer transit to Alaska. I did mention that it takes longer to get into the inside passage and normally on these itineraries you're probably going to have an extra sea day. Next up is that the itinerary options are not as plentiful as you'll find from Vancouver. These are mostly all going to be seven night round trips and they're going to be on the larger mega ships. Now this might be, as I said before, a pro to some, but the lack of options I feel is actually a con. The biggest con for Seattle is that those round trip itineraries, you must stop in Canada, normally Victoria, British Columbia, in just the evening time frames, allowing you to have somewhat of a wasted day in port. This is caused by that Passenger Vessels Services Act of 1886, mandating that you must stop in a foreign country on any round trip cruise out of the United States. And the last one on the list is the weather. Now, everybody has heard that the uh, Seattle area is known for its rain, and it is very, very unpredictable. Now, this could be said for Vancouver as well, but it could affect your embarkation or debarkation for your cruise. Now let's switch over to Vancouver. The pros for sailing out of Vancouver to Alaska is number one, the scenic beauty of Vancouver and the port area. You will be able to sail out of the port, the beautiful city skyline, as well as the proximity to the inside passage. You'll have land on both sides and it is absolutely breathtaking views when departing from Vancouver. The next pro for many people will be the convenience and the accessibility of Vancouver. This is an international airport, and for those wanting to fly internationally, this is going to be a great location. The proximity of the airport to the downtown area and the port to the downtown area is very, very good. I think one of the biggest pros for Vancouver is the itineraries. There's so many to choose from. You're going to have those standard seven night round trips, but you're also going to have the availability of the one way northbound and southbound to Anchorage or Whittier and Seward. These itineraries are normally going to be more port intensive and you'll probably have one extra port day than you would from a Seattle round trip. And for those that have never been to Canada or the British Columbia area, this is a great pre and post cruise location. There is a beautiful downtown area with lots of gardens, lots of tourist attractions, great architecture, and there's a very vibrant cultural scene. 
Now for some of the cons for sailing out of Vancouver to Alaska is that one, it's going to have additional travel logistics. You may find it a little bit cumbersome or somewhat new to have to deal and navigate with the immigration and customs process for your flights. This is also probably going to be just a slightly longer travel day than you'll find in Seattle. If you are an experienced traveler, then this shouldn't be that big of a problem. A minor con sailing out of Vancouver could be the cost. Several of the cruises sailing out of Vancouver might be slightly more expensive than sailing out of Seattle, and you're going to have those additional travel costs to consider as well. To be fair to Seattle, I'm also going to throw weather in here. It is also a very rainy region, and the weather is often unpredictable. This might affect your flights or your embarkation or debarkation from Vancouver. In my research leading up to this video for sailing out of Vancouver, it was reported in several areas that the major months of the Alaska season, May through September, Vancouver could get very crowded and congested. This might affect your ability to get on the ship and for leaving the ship. Please let me know in the comments below whether you've had any issues with the Canada Place port in Vancouver or the crowds or congestion in the Vancouver area. And the final con for sailing out of Vancouver, which might not be an issue for the experienced cruiser and experienced traveler, but these one-way itineraries add additional logistics, oftentimes additional cost, and then there are issues flying into Vancouver, arriving in Seward, taking the train up to Anchorage, and then flying back home out of Anchorage. So this does require additional planning and could be an issue for some travelers. So for the 2025 Alaska cruise season, I've put together a list of the ships that have been deployed by the major cruise lines, again, only the mass market cruises, as well as the premium segment. I did not include the luxury cruise lines or the expedition lines in this list. Take a look at these ships for both Seattle and Vancouver in the 2025 season.
I'm sure you noticed from reviewing those ships that the Seattle assets were much larger, newer ships, and those sailing out of Vancouver were normally the older, smaller ships. So that is something to definitely take into consideration. If you missed that, go back and watch that again. You'll absolutely see the differences. An Alaska cruise is an absolute bucket list experience. And whether you sail out of Seattle or Vancouver, I can absolutely guarantee that you're going to have an amazing experience. It was absolutely fantastic when we went on the Celebrity Solstice, and I definitely want to go back. Thank you everybody for watching today. I really do appreciate you supporting the channel. And again, consider subscribing to the channel if you have not done so already for additional cruise content just like this. When you're ready to book your next cruise, remember to email me here at the email address shown on the screen, or you can find my contact information in the video description. Thanks everybody for watching today, and you might want to watch one of these related videos next. Thanks again, and as always, I'll see you again soon.